Over the last 60 to 70 years, we've seen a global trend, mostly concentrated in Western and Eastern Asian countries, where people aren't having children. The population birth rate is plummeting. And this begs the question, why? What's causing this? And, well, what can we really do about it? Currently, I don't think that there are many, if any, really good and definitive answers for this. I think that what we're seeing now is people noticing that there's an issue and scrambling around, but they don't really have a, a good model to fit this. Now you could say, we have the demographic transition model that you've probably learned in high school. And that's a good kind of description of what's going on, but I don't think it's a great explanation. And in this video, we're going to be exploring all the possible ideas I can think of, of what's causing this and, well, potentially what this means for the future. So the first reason that I'm going to talk about is one that's growing online in popularity as a cause of the population collapse. And it's the idea of what I'm going to call neo-polygamy, or the rise of digital harems. And to understand this, you need to know how, how human mate selection works. So there's a theory stemming from evolutionary psychology called the idea of hypergamy, where men essentially date across and down and women date across and up. And this means that, you know, for most guys, women have an advantage in the dating market and women are the selectors. But for a small percent of, you know, high, high tier guys, they have a huge advantage over most women. And where this kind of ended up is that nowadays with the advent of social media and dating apps and the internet, you have some men who have extreme access to tons of women. And a lot of these women are, you know, more than happy to date these guys, but these guys are not really motivated by a monogamous relationship. They're more motivated with sleeping around. So what you can see nowadays is that, you know, some men are more, more or less dating a huge number of women all at once. And that essentially takes, you know, wipes a lot of women off the dating market. Uh, and, well, more time, more often than not, these, these, uh, you know, these men are using contraceptives, which means that, of course, you're not going to be having, having any, any kids from these interactions. So that's a big reason. But the issue, the issue is, this doesn't explain you know, this doesn't really totally explain our population collapse because the internet is a fairly new invention and this trend has been happening for, you know, a few decades before the internet even started. So what other ideas do we have? Around the time where we saw the population collapse beginning, it actually coincides pretty perfectly with the rise of, you know, the cultural revolution in the West, which resulted in a new idea of, well, feminism. And feminism came about from, well, there were multiple different incentive structures happening at the same time, but after World War II, we, we realized that, you know, women were very efficient in the workforce. And a lot of women were probably motivated to, you know, continue working jobs. And this resulted in a, well, in many different elements of the feminist movement, but one of them was the push for 
women in the workplace. Now, the ideas behind feminism have become more or less ubiquitous throughout most of the world today. But to understand kind of what the effect of, of this is, you have to kind of really empathize with, you know, what, what, does a, what does a working woman have to go through? You know, by definition, jobs take up a lot of time, or, you know, more or less, jobs take up a ton of time. And they also take up a lot of energy. And, you know, you, you work at a job, you come home, and you, what do you have to do? You have chores, right? You have to do your dishes, you have to do laundry, you have to make food for yourself, right? And then, you know, how much time do you have for other things, for diversion, for living life, for doing hobbies, right? Not much. And then, you know, maybe you have a weekend, but ultimately there's not much time to do a lot of stuff. You add a kid into the mix, having to raise a kid, and then maybe you add the fatigue and the pain of, of being pregnant into the mix. You know, it becomes a lot more difficult to have a kid, especially if you're expected to work. And I'd say that this could be probably one of the simplest reasons behind why we're seeing people having less kids. You're also seeing, especially in high class or in the upper classes, having a lot of kids is seen as, oh, that's trashy. Oh, you have, you had three kids. Oh, how, how boorish, right? So, so I guess in the upper, upper class societies, uh, having kids is seen as, you know, low class behavior. So there's, there's, there's these weird incentive structures as well in terms of status. You could also say that the rise of contraceptives, such as the pill and, you know, other contraceptives, and also the, the legalization of abortion and, you know, more people being receptive to abortion, that has also led to, you know, it's easier to control the result of, you know, sex. You know, in the past, you know, you, I mean, it's hard to have a kid. Lots of people have lots of trouble having just one kid. And the entire dance of human re reproduction from relationship, you know, all the way until, you know, you have a, a kid that's born all the way until raising them is, is, is complicated and delicate and hard to achieve. So it's hard already. And then you throw in conscious control into the mix through contraceptives and you know, that could probably put a lot more, that could douse the flame even more than it already has been. You could also say that community, the collapse of the American community, could be a cause of this. If you read the book Bowling Alone, you'll see this more thoroughly documented, but over the last several decades, we've seen people, you know, the American community is started falling apart and it's not as strong as it was in the past, which means that any interaction, any natural interaction that would have happened in the past is a lot more difficult today. Another issue is just the economic drain of children. Today you're expected to, you know, give your kid, to spend a lot more on your kids than you were in the past. And in the past, kids were actually not, not a drain at all. They were, a, uh, they were an asset. Kids would help on the farm. They would, you know, provide labor value. And, you know, that was a commonality or a common practice throughout all of human history. But with the advent of industrialization and mechanized, you know, machine labor, 
you know, people, people initially said, oh yeah, we'll put kids in the factories. And then they realized, wait a minute, you need to be intelligent. You need to be pretty intelligent to use these, you know, factory controls and, you know, kids died. And you, you had kids, you know, getting, uh, getting, you know, lung problems and, 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 and losing, <laughs> losing their lives and minds and stuff like that. And, and our society did away with child, child labor. And the result of that is now, you know, having kids is no longer an uh, economic asset. It's a short-term liability more than anything. Another idea is, you know, the, I would say the null hypothesis. And this is that a population collapse is just the natural result of an increased amount of wealth due to industrialization. And, you know, this is what I think the demographic transition model assumes. It assumes something kind of similar to what we see in the mouse utopia, where if people have a lot of resources, then, you know, maybe they just go crazy and then stop having kids and society goes crazy too and everything collapses. But I don't think that this is necessarily the best model. I don't think it's a simple issue of a, you know, a, a hidden psychological variable. I think that there's a lot of, you know, clear indicators of, of things we can, we can point to. Another element of this, which is kind of the opposite, is wage stagnation and housing costs. A lot of people cite the fact that they can barely keep themselves alive, you know, they can barely pay for their own rent. So how, how am I gonna, how am I gonna bring another, a kid into the mix, right? And given the fact that houses are a lot more expensive nowadays means that it's you know, harder to build something that you can expand a family into. Another issue is that there's a, there's a higher reliance on companies today than there are on communities. You know, in the past, you needed to rely on your kids to take care of you when you were old. And today, you could just buy a spot in a retirement home. And given the rise of steady salary income jobs, you know, you could, you could basically buy your way around most things today, which means that, you know, you, we've kind of outsourced the need for, you know, close human give or take, you know, give and take relationships, you know, where, where you're mutually helping each other compared, or we've swapped that out for everything is a labor transaction. So th that could potentially be a be one element. Another one, and I'd say this is a huge one, where we're getting a lot more evidence for, is a huge ideological rift. And this, this goes back to the, the Cultural Revolution in the 60s, but it's a little more nuanced. What we're seeing today, especially on the internet, is the rise of cultural silos where you know women are drawn to certain topics and men are drawn to different topics and the ideas and beliefs that rise out of these different cultural silos are different and within let's say the the feminist ideological silo you have an idea of of the victim oppressor narrative and and this breeds a lot of let's say resentment, resentment and hatred. Because one, one element of, I guess, the extreme iteration of this idea is that men stole labor from me, men oppressed me, men took everything from me, and I should basically hate men because of this. Which, which given the, the, the framework of the theory, you know, I, I can understand where that comes from. But the problem is that, you know, resentment is what kills relationships. Resentment, if you hate your partner, if you resent your partner, you know, you, then your relationship is basically over because, you know, how are you going to love someone like that? And human reproduction is already hard enough. You add resentment into that, you know, ideological resentment of everyone on the other sex, 
well, then it becomes, it might become impossible. And you also see this on the flip side in like the red pill community and stuff like that. There were some areas within the red pill community where it's like, oh yeah, women are just blah, blah, blah. But, but these silos could potentially be a huge reason. Another idea is endocrine disruptors, the prevalent use of plastic and, and other, other substances could be affecting our bodies in ways that we don't exactly understand and that could affect our fertility. Another idea is that, and, and I think this, this fuels the resentment idea I talked about, it's that there's a selection bias when it comes towards, I'd say, who, how women perceive men. Because as a woman, you're not going to just see a, a normal distribution and sampling of, of men who you see, right? What you're going to see is a disproportionate sampling of men who are going to deliberately seek you out. And I think what you, you know, the people who will deliberately seek out women might be skewed towards very negative male traits, such as, you know, kind of the Casanova archetype. Or, or the, you know, or the guy who just wants to use a woman for, you know, his own sexual pleasure or whatever. And I think this, this idea, this, what I will call sampling bias, has led to the ideas of, of let's say, rape culture. And potentially, even the real instantiation of these types of, uh, you know, environments. And, and I think that that comes down to a, a cultural abandonment of our previous, let's say, enforcers of morality. Because today we don't really, we, we decided in the 60s, you know, free love, you know, it's, it's fine to have sex with whoever you want, it's fine to do that. The old systems are oppressive. And when that happens, what demons have we let out of the closet? What, well, what does that lead to? And I think that potentially it could lead to the rise of immoral behaviors and a higher you know, prevalence of them. And that that could be that could be a pretty pretty big reason. But yeah, those those are some of the those are some of the big ones I would say. So ultimately, there are numerous factors that could potentially be causing the population collapse that we see today. And the question is, what factor is the largest and is this going to be something that humanity is going to have to face forever right are we always going to have a hampered population growth or is this something that you know is only a temporary you know moment in history if you have any other theories any other potential causes that i didn't mention here let me know and thank you for watching the video and I look forward to talking with you guys soon.